Welcome back to Europe! In this episode we're gonna explore the capital and largest city of the Czech Republic, Prague. I highly recommend you include Prague on your European itineraries. It's certainly one of my favorite cities and I've been here probably four or five times already and I'm always blown away by how amazing the city is. In fact, Prague regularly ranks under the top 10 most visited European cities, claiming the number 6 spot in 2022 with over 9 million visitors. Praha, as Prague is called in Czech, is home to many historic monuments and buildings such as the Old Town Square, the medieval astronomical clock, the Jewish Quarter, Charles Bridge, the Prague Castle, and so much more. And with that, let's go ahead and start the tour! Prague is pretty centrally located not just in the Czech Republic itself, but also in Europe as a whole being surrounded by Germany, Austria, Slovakia, and Poland. It's the perfect destination on your Europe itineraries between Berlin and Munich, or Berlin and Vienna. The city is divided by the Vltava River. West of the river you have the historic neighborhood Mala Strana and the very impressive Prague Castle, which we will tour in an upcoming episode. In this episode we'll focus on the side east of the river with the two main neighborhoods Old Town and New Town. This walking tour will give you a great first overview of the city. We'll kick things off at the Charles Bridge, and the main sites we'll see on this tour are the Astronomical Clock, Old Town Square, the Powder Tower, and Wenceslas Square. The Charles Bridge crosses the Vltava River, connecting the Old Town with the Mala Strana neighborhood on the other side of the river. Construction of this medieval stone arch bridge started in 1357 under the authority of King Charles IV and was not completed until 45 years later in the early 15th century. While nowadays there are multiple bridges crossing the river, until 1841 the Charles Bridge was the only one making it the most important connection between the Prague Castle and the city's old town. This land connection made Prague an important part of the trade route between Eastern and Western Europe. The bridge is 516 meters or almost 1700 feet long and nearly 10 meters or 33 feet wide. It was built with 16 arches and is protected by three bridge towers. Two are on the west side of the bridge and one on the Old Town side known as the Old Town Bridge Tower. While the towers and the bridge itself is a significant Gothic monument of Prague, the bridge is also decorated by 30 statues that are mainly in Baroque style. These statues of various saints were originally erected around the year 1700, but have been replaced by replicas. The originals can be found in the National Museum, which we will pass later on our tour. Alright, now let's walk further into the heart of the Old Town. We are walking along this narrow cobblestone street, Karlova. You'll find several restaurants and gift shops here. And then there is the good food, coffee and bakery where you can get these chimney cakes filled with ice creams or flavored whipped creams, topped with fresh fruits, caramels and other delicacies. You'll find these chimney cakes all over Prague. They were originally invented by Hungarians. I've noticed recently that bakeries have been opening in the US offering these chimney cakes. There is one in downtown Anaheim for instance. As you wander around Old Town you'll see many narrow streets and alleyways. This, along with the architecture and historic monuments and buildings, ultimately gives Old Town its special charm. Alright, here at the Fat Cat Beer House and Restaurant we'll turn right onto Jilska Street. You'll notice that there are many absinthe shops and bars throughout Prague. At this absinthery you can taste around 100 different absinths and see over 250 bottles of this premium alcohol from all over the world in their museum. 
Here we are walking through this narrow alleyway that will ultimately take us to the heart of Prague's Old Town. As we get out of that alleyway, the first thing you see is the Old Town Hall with the medieval astronomical clock. As you can tell, this area gets quite busy with tourists and I do recommend going here during the night time as well. The darkness and lighting create a completely different atmosphere. The astronomical clock was first installed in 1410, making it the third oldest astronomical clock in the world and the oldest clock still in operation. The clock mechanism has three main components. One, the astronomical dial representing the position of the sun and moon. Two, four animated figures that are set in motion on the hour, most notably a figure of a skeleton that represents death strikes the time every hour. In addition, 12 statues of apostles appear at the doorways above the clock. And then three, a calendar dial with medallions representing the months. According to local legend, the city will suffer if the clock is neglected and its good operation is placed in jeopardy. Note that the tower of the Old Town Hall is open to the public and offers panoramic views of the Old Town. As we go past the Old Town Hall, we get to the massive and historic Old Town Square. The building you see here with the two spires is the Gothic Church of Our Lady Before Tin, which has been the main church of this part of town since the 14th century. The building to the left of the church is the Kinski Palace, a former palace built in Rococo style between 1755 and 1765. Today it houses an art museum. On the opposite side, the same side as the Old Town Hall, you'll find another church, the Baroque St. Nicholas Church, which was built between 1732 and 1737. In the center of the square, you see a statue of Czech religious reformer Jan Hus, who became the inspiration of Husitism, a key predecessor to Protestantism. Jan Hus was burned at the stake in Konstanz, Germany, for his beliefs. The statue was erected on July 6, 1915 to mark the 500th anniversary of his death. During Christmas and Easter, markets are held on the square. They resemble medieval markets and especially the Christmas market is visited by hundreds of thousands of visitors and is considered one of the best Christmas markets in the world. Behind the Old Town Square we find the Green Devil's Absent Bar and Shop. I didn't go inside, which I regret now, because the photos of the place look really cool. So if you've been there, let me know in the comments below how it is. I'll make sure to go there on my next visit to Prague. This beautiful building here is the Hotel Paris, a 5-star Art Nouveau hotel built in 1904. It is still family run and the building was declared a historical monument. And now we get to the Powder Tower, a gothic style tower which is one of the 13 original city gates. It separates the old town from the new town of Prague. Construction began in 1475 and the tower was intended to be an attractive entrance into the city instead of a defensive tower. In the 17th century, the gate was used to store gunpowder, hence the name Powder Tower. So now we are on the street Na Prikope, which separates the old town and the new town. This street is one of the main areas for shopping. You'll find well-known clothing stores as well as boutique shops right here. And then we turn left onto Wenceslas Square, one of the main city squares and the center of the business and cultural communities in the new town of Prague. As you can tell, it's actually less of a square but more a boulevard. It has the shape of a very long rectangle spanning a total of 45,000 square meters or over 484,000 square feet. Many historical events occurred here and it is a traditional setting for demonstrations, celebrations and other public gatherings. It is also the place with the busiest pedestrian traffic in the whole country. 
From early December until the first week of January, you'll find a Christmas market here and it's also a popular spot for New Year's Eve celebrations. In the distance, at the southeastern end of the square, you see the grand neoclassical Czech National Museum, which, as mentioned earlier, houses the original statues of the Charles Bridge. And now, let me tell you a little fun fact. The square is named after Saint Wenceslas, the Duke of Bohemia, which is now the Czech Republic. He had his servants prepare cold brewery baths with wort from the nearby abbeys for him. And the first known beer bath that he took dates back to the year 921. Beer spas have been a part of Eastern European culture for centuries and to this day you can find many of them, including right here in Prague, like the original beer spa. You'll soak in hand-carved royal oak tubs filled with the natural extracts used to brew Czech beer. The vitamins and enzymes that are naturally present in brewer's yeast help regenerate your skin, remove the harmful substances from your body and ease fatigue and stress. And of course you'll enjoy a pint of beer while you're at it. In next week's episode we're gonna explore more of Prague, so feel free to subscribe to my channel, that way you don't miss an episode. And in the meantime check out my Munich walking tour, as Munich is a great destination either before or after visiting Prague. And with that I say thank you, Jekui and Dankeschön!